Hey guys, in this video today we're going to explore the rest trigger on Flugo. So, um, if you haven't used Flugo before, this is the web UI. Um, I suggest you use the web UI in many cases just because it's easy to use. Um, so, we're going to start off just by creating a new app. And I'm just going to give this a name, a sample, create a flow, doesn't matter what the name is, I'm just going to call it rest sample. And you'll see here that the flow appears here. So if we click on the flow, you'll see our flow is empty. Um, but if we want to add the trigger, what you do is you click on this little box here, and this is how you add triggers. Um, first thing we want to do though is actually add an input in as a primer. So I'm just going to call this message. And we're just going to leave this as a string. Hit save. And so now when we actually select our trigger, and because this is a video on REST, which is HTTP, um, essentially what we'll be doing is that we we'll have that um, input, that message parameter that we just created that we can actually map um, possibly some of the trigger outputs to that. Um, but just to walk through the settings first is first you need a port. So this can be a variable if you want. This is your formatting on the variable. Or you can just hard code this, maybe 8080. And method. So notice how um, if you just click on it, there's a drop down. So you can do a variable. But you could also just click one of, let's say, get, and it'll fill that in for you. And path. So now the actual path of um, whatever you're building. So maybe it's going to be, um, I don't know, URI 1 whatever I want. So I, I can hit save in that, at that point and then my trigger will be saved. So now if I go to map to flow inputs, so let's say I wanted to be able to get the value of some sort of um, output from the trigger. So in this case the trigger outputs certain I guess, params, in this case the query params, path params, params, header and such, and I want to map it to this message input. So what I could do is that now I'm saying okay this message input param will have my query param so essentially whatever my query param was, that will be now mapped into this message parameter for the rest of my project. So hit save. Um, and then if I went here, say, I'm um, just add a log message just to show you this. And I'm going to configure the log message. Now if I wanted to add in the log message, if I add in this flow.message, this will actually be the query parameter value that we've mapped earlier in our map of flow inputs. So essentially it's just a way to say, okay, this is what my trigger output's gonna be. Um, add, basically just define it in some variable so you can use it somewhere else. Obviously when you're naming these, you would, if I was gonna basically map the query param, I'd probably name the actual parameter query param because it'd be a lot easier to use. But um, just for the sake of example, I just call it a message. So I just leave that. Yeah, so if you want to build a uh, rest trigger, that's just how you go about it. Just make sure you have to fill in these settings, and then if you're going to want to map or get any type of output from the trigger, um, just make sure you create input, and that you actually map that into whatever you need. And if you want to see the documentation, just feel free to go to our doc site, typicalsoftware.github.io backslash logo. And if you scroll down and you go to triggers rest, you'll see that there's some information how to install it. Let's say if you want to install it uh, with via the CLI, and then the schema um, outputs and inputs it and such. So if you notice here, um, you're going to need to put in your port, you need to put your method, your path, and then if you, look, you notice that here are the outputs, exactly what we saw in the web UI. Um, and there's some written examples here as well if you just want to uh, see that as well. So yeah, uh, thank you.